Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk, a listener-supported ministry. In fact, thank you so much for being part of that support for James Dobson Family Institute. Well, welcome to another edition of Family Talk, the broadcast division of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. I'm Roger Marsh, joined in studio for this segment by Gary Bauer, who is the Senior Vice President of Public Policy here at the Dobson Policy Center. And Gary, we have a great conversation that we're going to hear a little bit of today as part of our Countdown to Decision 2024 series featuring Pastor Jack Hibbs. And I know you and Jack had a chance to, to talk earlier this year. It's a pretty fascinating conversation. If we had a thousand or 5,000 pastors in America like uh, like Jack Hibbs, uh, the country wouldn't be in nearly the trouble that we're in now. Amen. The country really needs moral leadership, and Jack gives a great demonstration of what that looks like. And the thing that's so exciting about how he talks about all this is that he reminds us that all these institutions, the family, the church, but also government, were all created by God. Amen. And so if we allow some group or some special interest movement to say, you Christians have to stay out of all this. Well, we would be abandoning the very things that God created for our happiness and well-being. What we're about to hear is an excerpt of a conversation that Jack Hibbs had with our own uh, Joseph Backholm and Allison Santafane and our Countdown to Decision 2024 website. We encourage you, if you haven't been there yet, to go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash Countdown to Decision 2024. Gary, I've never seen how prolific we can be in the video department. I know that you've enjoyed uh, watching these and listening to these as well. Talk about why there are a lot of people who are saying, okay, God's going to do what God's going to do. Right. So we're going to vote the way we're going to vote or not vote, as the case may be. But you and I both know there are 25 to 35 million Christian Americans who will opt to sit out an election rather than take up the mantle. Talk about why it's so important for us as we get ready to listen to these words from Jack Hibbs to actually pick up that mantle and say, my vote does matter. Well, Dr. Dobson has been talking about this forever, that there's this great clash going on in our society between people that believe God is, and broadly speaking, a lot of people that believe God isn't. That isn't an exaggeration. I was looking the other day at this among people that describe themselves as atheists. They don't believe there's a God. And people that describe themselves as agnostics, they've looked at the situation and everything that's around them and go, yeah, I don't know whether there's a God or not. Unbelievably, those self-described people vote by 80 or 90 percent. Now, mm. just think about that. And the people that believe there's a God, a God of the Bible, the God that said in the beginning, the God that we have uh, molded our lives after, we vote at levels that, quite frankly, are scandalous. And by doing that, we are turning over this great country that was supposed to be a shining city on a hill. And right in front of our eyes, we're seeing that light from the shining city on a hill being extinguished because too many Christians are AWOL absent without leave in this big battle. You know, it's a gift. It's a privilege to be able to cast our vote. And when we talk about stewardship, Gary, I know that that's a big one for you in terms of how do we steward our vote. And you recently here on the Family Talk broadcast, you had a conversation with Dr. Owen Strand, who is the director of our new Dobson Culture Center, the senior director. And he's written an ebook on this very issue of why it's important for Christians not to, as he puts it, not to waste our vote. Um, Jack Hibbs is a part of that black robe regiment that is encouraging people to do the same. Let's get into a little bit now. This is part of our video series from the Countdown to Decision 2024 website. You can go there after you listen to this excerpt when you go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash count down to Decision 2024. There's voter guides, short reels, long form interviews. They're all there, all available without cost. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash countdown dash two dash decision dash 2024. Let's hear an excerpt of our Countdown to Decision 2024 interview with Jack Hibbs today here on Family Talk. It's down to two religions, and it goes way back to Mount Carmel. When Elijah stood there and said, choose the God, which God are you serving? If your gods are in control, have them bring down fire and lap up this offering. Or is the Lord God, is Yahweh God? Let's see. 
we're there again. We are there again. Is it going to be my pleasure that Trump's truth, what my feelings say, overrides what everybody else is dictating or trying to say to me? It's all about me. This is pure pagan hedonism, and it's not going to stop unless the church and the pastors speak up. And therein, I think, should be America's great concern. Throughout scripture and throughout life, it has always been picking the lesser of the two evils. People have turned that around in their narrative to try to justify or explain away their uncomfortable feeling that they have about, gosh, I don't want to tell anybody I voted for this person. You know, I don't want to get caught in that trap because I don't have the boldness to stand behind my convictions. So I'm just going to sit it out. To vote is a biblical opportunity provided to us by God. We live in what is called a constitutional republic. We don't live in a democracy, contrary to what you hear. We live in a constitutional republic. See, what does that mean? It means our founders gave us a form of government, really, it's God who gave it to us, to exercise our freedom that we, the people, again, a gift given by God, are to select our leaders. So when somebody says, I'm going to sit it out, it is really hard to try to figure out that person's level of commitment to the gospel and to the word of God for this reason. Jesus said, when given an opportunity to you, if you have five opportunities or 10 or 30, the Bible calls them talents, opportunities. If you take it and you bury it waiting for the Lord's return, Jesus said, when I come back, I'm going to be furious with you because you didn't get involved. You took it and you tucked it into a safe place instead of investing the opportunity I gave you. And then he commended the other two because they took what they had and they invested it. So if you don't vote, you are burying your opportunity. And then finally this, the way we got to this place today in America, the data is overwhelming on this, by the way, overwhelming is that evangelical Christians have not voted. Listen, there is no perfect candidate. There will never be one. The Messiah will not arrive on Air Force One. The answer is not in the White House. The answer is in God's house. But don't sit it out. People died so you could vote your convictions. And I pray that the Christian would do exactly that. Pastors, I'm just speaking to you. Do you know that you're called? I'm not saying are you in the pulpit because your grandpa was in the pulpit and your dad was in the pulpit. No, are you called? And if you're called, you must speak even what is uncomfortable to you. Okay, you must speak truth. And sometimes even for the pastor to take a stand in the pulpit, the truth is uncomfortable to the pastor, but he must obey. If you can't speak up right now while it's easy, you will never be speaking up. God told the nation of Israel and Jeremiah, hey, if you've gotten tired walking with the footmen in this battle, what are you going to do when the chariots arrive and the Jordan River overflows when things really get tough? I only am to perform for the audience of one. I have feelings. I bleed also. But I can't let those feelings govern the fact that in the end, I am to please only one and we must operate from that position. Mean is the use and the abandonment and the prostitution of children and of these people. To be an immigrant, you have to go through the legal process. These are illegal aliens is the legal term. However, they are human beings. You want to protect them? Shut down the border. God is the one who establishes the borders of nations and has set those people who dwell with the boundaries of them. So for us to violate God's rule is to open up a Pandora's box. And what does America have right now regarding immigration? A Pandora's box. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 is still in the Bible. And here's what it says. That we are to be obedient to Christ. And when we are obedient to him, by doing so, we will punish all disobedience. And then our obedience will be spoken of. How do we in a constitutional republic punish disobedience? In this country, we speak up against evil. We legislate against evil. 
and we preach against evil, Paul says, expose it, but there's no out. Every believer needs to be obedient. That's how you punish disobedience. Isaiah chapter 10, verse one. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they themselves have prescribed. And so the Christian must get involved. There's no sitting out at this time. There never was. Christianity is not a spectator faith. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, people groan. That's Proverbs 29 too. <gasps> Christian nationalists. This would make me a Hebrew nationalist. <laughs> this is from the book of Proverbs from the Hebrews. No, listen, friends, listen. The fact is God is God. The nations of the earth belong to him and we are to give him honor. And so it is really the clash of two cultures that are being lived out right now in this battle. And if I might be blunt, it's a Judeo-Christian worldview versus an atheistic Marxist worldview. But let's remember the atheistic Marxist worldview. They're very fond of 501c3 benefits so long as it benefits them. Planned Parenthood is the largest 501c3 tax-exempt organization in the United States of America. A lot of people don't realize that. The point is, it's two religions clashing. And the religion is man is God or God is God. Paul the Apostle said, I'm beating my body into subjection. That's what I'm doing. I'm controlling my body. To do what? To do a spiritual discipline. I have my place. I have my Bible. I have my light. And set your alarm clock at least an hour earlier than what you normally do. That's what I do. But get up early and seek the Lord. And then the other thing is this. When you get the Word of God in you, this is the awesome thing about the Bible. It's alive. You will notice a change in your conduct and demeanor, and you'll notice a supernatural thing happen. The more Bible you get in, the more Bible starts to come out. And the more Bible in, the more your decision-making changes. And so there's things that I often take a stand on, and I know it's biblical, but in the back of my mind, I'm saying, what am I doing? Wait a minute. I'm standing on an issue. I'm taking a stand right now for parental rights. This is a God-ordained Biblically mandated issue, Deuteronomy chapter six, this is clear as day. I'm gonna stand to fight for parental rights and I'm willing to die on that hill. If you say, are you willing to die on the hill of taxes? Nope, I'm not. I pick my battles wisely and I pick few of them. They've got to scream at me from the scriptures. If I have that, then I can stand without apology and I can just take the hit because I know that if I'm on his word, I'll be correct because he's correct. But here's what I call the trinity of truth for me personally. And everything comes out from that. Number one, the definition of marriage that defines the nuclear family. What is a family that defines a lot of things. So my first biblical thing is Genesis chapter one, verses 26 to 28. God created marriage, male, female. So I stand behind that. The other one is this is the unborn. God says, I want you to speak up for those who have been destined to be crushed. Okay, so I've got to speak up for the unborn no matter what, no doubt about it. And then the third thing is this, God says Israel, he says defend and bless my people, comfort my people, give the gospel to my people. From those three areas, I can tell you how a politician is gonna vote on so many other issues from those three, you name it, from the economy, defense, military spending, to social issues. And so those are the three things that, that I stand on and when somebody brings up, for example, parental rights, oh, you're going after the God-ordained nucleus of a family, and it might even bleed over into a child's life. So as long as I'm biblical, I don't have to apologize for anything, and I can take a stand on that. And you know, some people will say, you're so courageous. I'm not courageous. I'm trying everything possible to be obedient.
Every one of us as believers must guard our hearts against any idol. The Lord is not number one on a list of 10. He's got to be number one on a list of one. And so when you see that everything comes from a biblical worldview, for example, Jesus said it this way, so cute, it's so beautiful, because you're going to think of, of little kids in Sunday school. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. Very few people understand what that means. When Jesus says, let your light so shine, that means everywhere, nowhere is exempt. And men will glorify your Father which is in heaven, generic men. It means in the day of judgment, not today. In the day of judgment, they're going to say, oh my goodness, they were right. He was right. So the thing is this, never, never, never. Let politics or anything be an idol. What you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're doing everything from a biblical worldview to honor Jesus. Even if it's at your own risk, it's irrelevant. There are people right now in Vietnam, there are people right now in Iran that are being martyred for Jesus. But, you know, here in the West, in America, maybe it's white collar martyrdom. We're being martyred for speaking the truth. We're being made fun of whatever the case may be. The thing is this, there is no area of us sitting things out. We must let our light shine. What we have to do, if we stay in the word, that is going to mitigate the idols in our lives from sports to money, to pleasure, to leisure, to fishing. It doesn't have to be politics. It could be anything that robs your affection or takes up your time away from God. Father, we come before you and Lord, we honor the fact that you are the creator God. You're the God. When we say Father, we're talking about Genesis 1-1. Everything beyond that, Lord, is very crystal clear in the scriptures. You are sovereign. You create nations. You raise up kings. You take kings down. You cause nations to be established and you dissolve nations. You are all powerful. And Lord, here we are. And we're asking you, Lord God, for wisdom. We know that America is a nation far from you. We are a post-Christian nation. But God, we do thank you that there's a remnant of real believers who love you and want to obey you. And we're asking for mercy. Lord, if you gave mercy to Nineveh, then God, we pray that you would give mercy to America in this upcoming, not only this election, I'm asking for mercy for the church because Lord, the church has gotten itself in a lot of difficult positions because of not following you. The church has become fearful, irrelevant, silent, marginalized, quiet. Lord, may we become the beacon of love and of grace and of power and of mercy that those that are lost and those that have been wounded by cultural experiments would be able to say, what, what can I, I find here under the cross or in the gospel? Who is this Jesus you love? Someone rescue me. Lord God, may we see a great awakening in America right now in its darkest hour. Father God, do an, a wonderful thing. And Lord, thy will be done in this upcoming election. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, and that is just an excerpt of a special conversation that we had with Pastor Jack Hibbs. And today here on Family Talk, uh, Gary Bauer and I are in studio here listening to this, enjoying uh, everything Jack has to say. This is part of our Countdown to Decision 2024 electoral series, which we have up at drjamesdobson.org forward slash countdown dash to dash decision dash 2024. You can see its entirety. Uh, Gary, you know, he really drove home a point. There's a whole generation of younger people, especially who think that for some reason, biblical worldview, voting your values conservatively is somehow unfair. You know, it's, it's mean to people who are in immigrant status or whatever it is. Talk about why it's so important for us to, you know, what, what Jack said really helps us underscore what's biblical as opposed to what's politically correct. Well, you know, Jack really takes on this, this uh, word mean because it's thrown out there. You know, if you don't believe in open borders, you're mean. If you don't think we ought to take one family's money and give it to somebody else, 
who needs it more, we're being mean. Actually, those things, uh, the redistribution of money by using the power of the government or having open borders, those things are actually associated with really terrible things happening. An open border, for example, has led millions of people to make a very dangerous journey to cross into America, and children are being raped, children are being sex trafficked. There's nothing compassionate about any of that. There is lawlessness around our border, and then when we don't make any effort to figure out who the people are coming in, we inflict on often minority communities in America this wave of illegal migrants with whom you've got drug issues, drug gangs, all kinds of other really mean things happening to the communities mm -hmm. where those folks are being settled. So Christians have got to be discerning. We've got to be wise. We've got to think these things through and be logical and biblically based. And if we do that, we'll realize that the folks making a mean argument are leading us down the wrong road. It's important to steward your vote well. And here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, of course, Gary Bauer is with me in studio. Gary is the Senior Vice President of Public Policy here at the Dr. Dobson Policy Center. Uh, we've created an entire website dedicated to all things election 2024. And of course, with early voting ginning right up, and I was reading a report earlier today, Gary, I know you know this is true since you've been a candidate for president, and you and your colleague Michelle Bachman have actually you know, run for the highest office. You know that Democrats have a tendency to vote early, whereas Republicans Republicans have a tendency to vote on election day. And I was reading a report even just this morning that said, that I think it was USA Today, was indicating that on the Democrat side of the equation, folks are leaning progressive 65 to 24 with a few undecided who are going to vote early. So it's really, I mean, if you know in your heart what is right and how to vote, if you have the opportunity, make the compelling case, Gary, for us as believers to say, I'm not going to wait till November 5th. I'm going to cast my vote now. Well, you don't know where you're going to be on election day. You don't right. know what what life is going to deal you on that day. You may between now and then, God forbid, you could become ill, there could be a problem in your in your family that you have to deal with. There are all sorts of things. We had a race in New York, a, a special election a few months ago in which there were two candidates and there was one candidate that was the type of candidate that Christians would like. He was pro-life and pro-family, but the people that wanted him did not vote early in that election. And then guess what happened on election day? There mm. was an unexpected snowstorm and that vote in many cases could not get out of their homes to the polling place and that good pro-life, pro-family candidate uh, lost the race. So uh, if you've got a chance to vote now, go on and do it by absentee ballot or by showing up at an early polling place. And it basically makes it more likely that all the good voters will, in fact, have cast their vote. Yeah, it's important to do that. And especially if you live in what we would call a swing state. I hear at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, we put together voter guides for the swing areas because, Gary, you know how important that is. I mean, the, they call them swing states for a reason. One or two counties tips one way or the other, and it can throw the whole electoral college uh, either into balance or out of balance. And uh, uh, stress how important that is for our listeners to get that voter guide, especially if they're in one of the swing states that we've identified. You, you know, uh, Roger, knowledge is power. And uh, you want to be an informed voter. We would never on the air tell you, you've got to vote for this person, this person, and that person. Right. What we will tell you over and over again, look at the issues, look at where the candidates stand, which is what our voter guide does for you. And, I, and we believe that once you do that and then pray for wisdom, uh, nine times out of 10, you're going to land on the same place on the ballot. Well, if you're in a swing state, go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash countdown to decision 2024. Or you could just go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash 2024 voter guide. And you could find those 10 swing states that we've identified as areas where you can cast your vote and really have an impact. And as Gary mentioned, find out when early voting begins where you are and get those votes in. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen weather-wise. You don't go 
what's going to happen work-wise or otherwise. And I know I've been voting absentee for my entire adult life simply because the first general election that I've realized I wasn't going to be at the polling place or that area uh, on election day, I applied for it, I got it, and never looked back. And I've never missed an election since then. So um, uh, take it from me, there's nothing subversive about it, but uh, it's definitely a way to have your vote count. Uh, Gary Bauer, thank you so much for your observations today, your commentary about the, what we've heard from Pastor Jack Hibbs encouraging uh, believers to vote today here on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Roger. It's mutual. I, I love uh, having these conversations with you. Let's pray that uh, we all get out to vote and we save this great country. All right. DrJamesDobson.org forward slash countdown dash two dash decision dash 2024 is the website. For Dr. Dobson, Gary Bauer, and the entire staff here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, I'm Roger Marsh. Thanks so much for listening. Join us again next time right here for another edition of Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.